Today's a real quick episode, this on the back of some coaching I did last night. These were some younger gentlemen, uh, under 13 and under 9 to 10. And you know, the, the group that we're working with, it was a group of young boys who didn't quite make the top rep side for their age. Um, and you know, there are some specific reasons why. Um, But it's not to say that they don't have the talent, it's more about the mindset. And so this is a quick note, just for those that are younger in the audience, um, and just kind of to say that, like, look, the one thing that is most important at at that age, particularly, you know, kind of below the age of 16, if you look at terms of the long-term athletic development um, pyramid that we talk about in our coaching program, really that age is about learning to compete, learning to have fun with the sport and, you know, understanding kind of how to be consistent, how to enjoy playing the sport and playing it just for the sake of playing it. Um, And I think, you know, this is one thing that I kind of lead all my coaching sessions with and what I think is most important for athletes to get their head around is there are some fundamental skills that are super important for every game. If it's something like um, Aussie rules football, it's obviously kicking the, the footy and catching. If you can kick the footy, then you're going to be an amazing, amazing player. Um, and in basketball, it's dribbling and shooting. If you can dribble the ball and confidently dribble and move and shoot the ball, then you're going to be miles ahead of most players. You'd be shocked at how many players can't dribble the ball and can't shoot. There are players in the NBA that can't do that. DeAndre Jordan is an example of that, a guy that's absolutely massive um, and isn't probably the world's best dribbler or there are definitely some kids on a high school team that would be a better dribbler than him. He's available, he's able to get away with it because he's nearly seven foot tall and absolutely jacked and incredibly athletic. But with that said, he could still be a lot better and able to play like a European style player if he could shoot it and dribble. Um, that's not to say career advice for DeAndre Jordan, but all I'm trying to say is that, you know, basketball requires certain skill sets and those are the fundamentals of the game. And so, you know, shooting is kind of hard to work on sometimes because you have to get out and you get to a court and get shots up and, you know, within our Supersonics network we kind of provide access to certain facilities where you're able to get those shots up more often and we're working on getting more of those facilities built, but There's another thing, so that's kind of 50% of the equation, but then the other 50% is is dribbling and handling the ball. And from my own experience as a player and from all of our own experiences as a player, the more, um, the better your handle gets and the better you're able to dribble the ball and handle the ball, the better your shooting gets, the better your finishing gets. Because you're able to get the ball where you need it to go, you've got control over the ball, Um, essentially the ball becomes a part of your nervous system um, to get science and technical essentially what happens is in the same way that your brain represents part of the motor cortex towards say if you're writing for example using your hands um, because the brain really has this motor cortex which allows you to pick up skills and develop skills and this is the concept of neuroplasticity in that every time you do something, um, the brain is is plastic, which means that it can be molded, and it allows you to improve at that thing, and that's the fundamentals of skill development. And so when we're dribbling a basketball, we're causing our brain to develop and adapt to dribbling that basketball, and we develop space in our motor cortex that allows us to get a better feel for the ball. That's what people talk about when they talk about a feel for the ball and it allows us to control it more and ultimately that allows us to get it into the positions that we need to get it into to be able to shoot the basketball better, to be able to finish the basketball better. And if you notice the best shooters in the world, um, arguably Steph Curry is the greatest shooter of all time and he's also one of the greatest ball handlers of all time. Um, Some people would say, you know, JJ Redick isn't an amazing ball handler but if you look at his ball handling skills, he certainly is still an elite ball handler. Compared to Steph Curry, okay, probably not, but if he had to play the point guard role, if you watch his games at Duke, for example, you could still see him dribbling the ball a lot. So, 
you know, being able to handle the ball and dribble the ball is very, very fundamental to all aspects of basketball. And the best thing about it is that it's going to improve your jump shot, it's going to improve your layups, it's going to improve every single aspect of the game. It's just going to improve your general confidence and ability to score. The um, best thing about it is you can do it anywhere, and it only takes five to ten minutes. You know, it's just about consistency. Everything in training, and for basketball specifically, it's about consistency. You want to lay down those patterns in the motor cortex. It's like the best way to get good at walking is to walk. The best way to get good at something is to do it regularly. So the brain picks it up as a habit. You know, if you're thinking about dribbling, you're thinking about shooting, that is going to create the motor pathways that you need because our brain doesn't know the difference between an imagined event and an actual event. Um, and there's a bunch of research showing that people who practice shooting free throws uh, got 80% of the result as those who Oh, sorry, those who visualized practicing shooting free throws got 80% of the result of those who actually shot the free throws without actually shooting any free throws because our brain perceives um, memories and thought um, as the same as an actual activity. It doesn't know the difference. And so by working on your handle at home, uh, there's a series of dribbling drills that we've just gotten from some of our favorite trainers on YouTube that are in the course in the Supersonics online platform. And literally doing, one of my favorite is in, out, cross, in, out, cross. Um, if you work with me today and you work with me at all, that's what I start every session with. And there's no reason why before every single time you go to play basketball and every single day, you can't do that sequence of dribbles um, for five to 10 minutes. And trust me, your game will improve dramatically. And it's all about that no excuses mentality and just getting out and doing it. Pounding the ball as hard as you can and developing that ball control. Um, and that will make leaps and bounds of differences towards your game over the long run. So, you know, I guess there's that, that attitude of, of not taking it seriously and, and wanting to play and wanting to get out and play, but I think we can reach a middle ground and, and just really do some basic skill work. And trust me, you'll find that once you start doing that skill work and start improving, the game will become a lot more fun for you. So that's just a little note and reflection on kind of coaching some of the younger kids and, and what younger kids can do to really improve their game um, and just have a lot more fun out of it. And so the summary is, you know, get out, do five to ten minutes of skill work, which is dribbling work, and improve the most fundamental skills of your game, and you'll be miles ahead of everyone else and start to love playing the game, which is what basketball is all about, especially three-on-three.